This chapter is going to be about conservation biology. So it's going to start out a little sad, but we will end on a good note again. So um, what we're currently going through is something called a biodiversity crisis. Um, so there's, there's a lot of argument about extinction. A lot of people say, well, extinction happens all the time. That's what marks geologic time. But the rate that extinction is happening right now is happening at an alarming rate. And so that's why we're very, very, very concerned about it. So there's three main aspects of diversity that are being um, affected by this. First is the loss of genetic diversity. So we're going through genetic bottlenecking and that type of thing, which is very, very dangerous because then an entire species can be wiped out. The next one is losing species diversity. So we're actually losing the total amount of species on Earth, which is very, very, very scary because as we know, the more biodiverse an area is, the more resilient it is. Um, now, we are trying to deal with this with the Endangered Species Act. So um, two terms that you're familiar with but you may not know the actual definition of is endangered species and a threatened species. So an endangered species is one that is in danger of extinction. It's most likely going extinct um, very, very, very soon if something isn't done. A threatened species is one we think will become endangered very soon. So that's kind of the difference between the two. Um, just to give you some numbers, 12% um, of birds, 20% of mammals, and 32% of amphibians are threatened with extinction right now. That's scary. Those are huge, huge numbers. And then the last thing is going to be losing ecosystem diversity. So like what they're finding is entire ecosystems are turning over into new ones or like dying off and that's scary. So we want to keep all of our ecosystems and biomes that we've been talking about. And some of them are very, very, very sensitive. So the big question is, why is this important to humans? And chances are, if you're taking this class, you know why it's important. But what's really important is getting other people that may not care to realize why it's important to them. So um, one thing is it's a crucial natural resource. It gives us crops, um, we get fibers from it, and we get medication. Now that medication is a huge factor. Pharmaceutical companies are realizing this now. So now pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies are buying up huge chunks of rainforest so that they can preserve it because they know that there's like important plants in there that could create medications and things. That's a double-edged sword, but you know, take it as you want. Um, if we lose genes, we could lose valuable genetic potential. So, you know, there's all these studies going on about like, okay, so a sea star can regenerate their arm. Well, what if we could isolate that gene and we could use it for us, for people who have, you know, lost an arm in a car accident. Now, I know that sounds like the start of a really scary sci-fi movie, but still it's something to think about. Um, and then, of course, we've got the biotech field. So, so many crazy things that we're doing with enzymes, prokaryotes, you know, biofuel, all that kind of stuff. So, um, we, are, we, we don't want to be, you know, killing all of this stuff off before we know their potential. Um, and then the one that's kind of obvious is ecosystem services. So, you know, what I always tell people is, do you like breathing? Do you like drinking water? Because nature's providing that for you, right? Um, one, one thing that's come up a lot in the news lately is pollination. We didn't realize how important bees were to us until we started seeing them collapse and saying, oh, this is bad, right? So there's a lot of things that ecosystems do for us, nutrient cycling and all that kind of stuff. So we need to be in tune with that as well. So the next question is, what's causing these threats to biodiversity? The first major one is going to be habitat destruction, right? So that's happening in a bunch of different ways, and I've got some, you know, depressing pictures to show you, but deforestation is a huge one. You know, they're cutting down the rainforest so that they have pastures for cows and things like that. Um, We'll talk about that next one in a second. Let me, whoops, get back to there. Um, so to give you some numbers, 50, more than 50% of the wetlands in the United States have been destroyed. That is crazy because he's talked about wetlands in the previous chapter and how they're good for controlling flooding, water purification. So that's not good. 93% um, of coral reefs have been damaged by human activities. That is crazy, right? So we need to get this under control. Now, one thing that, that they're doing is something called fragmentation. And I thought I had a picture of this um, for you. Let me see if I can find it. Do, do, do. Um, oh, my, my stuff isn't working. Okay, there we go. These are pictures of fragmentation. So um, fragmentation is where you have these little patches of isolated habitat, but they're not united, right? So if you're talking about something that's scared to go through these houses, yards, and a street, 
these little populations might get isolated and then you could have that genetic isolation happen and you can have genetic drift happen. Um, this one is hilarious. Oh yeah, we'll just leave this little patch here but clear cut the rest of the rainforest. Yeah, that doesn't work. Then you have genetic drift happening and that's very, very, very detrimental. Um, the next thing that's causing a lot of problems is introduced species. So these are species that come from another location, they get introduced. How does that happen? It can happen a bunch of different ways. So it could be stowaways on crops, you know, so we're getting bananas from a different country and a spider comes in on those bananas and all of a sudden it just takes over. Um, you could have people that don't know any better. Um, you know, it's amazing the, the reasons that some of these things have come into our populations. Um, there is a red berry tree called the Brazilian pepper that's taking over the south because some people brought it in because they couldn't get holly to grow at Christmas time and they wanted something with red berries. Oops, Brazilian pepper can affect you like poison ivy and um, it grows crazy amounts. It cannot be cut down. You have to actually inject it with um, a pesticide to kill it. Um, there's another, the, you've heard of the tea tree, right? Um, that's going to be the um, melaleuca tree that produces tea tree oil. Well, that tree drinks 50 gallons of water a day. And so when they were draining the Everglades because they thought they wanted to build on the Everglades back in the 50s, they brought the melaleuca tree to help dry it up. And then they were like, ah, it's too buggy here. And they just left it. And now the melaleuca tree has started taking over. Once again, if you burn it, it's like, oh, thank you for spreading my seeds. So the only way to kill that is to inject it with pest, um, herbicides. Um, there have been, um, well, the best part with the melaleuca is they actually brought in the melaleuca beetle to see if the melaleuca beetle could actually um, kill off the melaleuca tree. Thankfully, it just died, but could you imagine how bad that could have been, right? So there's a lot of crazy things that, that have been brought in. And just to show you some pictures of some things that have been brought in, um, here we've got the pike. Um, the pike was brought in here to Colorado to um, for people to fish. And all of a sudden they noticed all these native species started dying off because the pike was eating everything. So now they're like, get those, you know, fish those pike, take them out, that's great, you know, and so um, they, they realized they screwed up. Um, another example is this guy, the kudzu vine. Um, if you've ever been to Georgia, it is just taking over and it's from Asia and they, they just don't even know what to do with it. Um, so it's crazy that that one grows really, really fast. Um, and then zebra mussels you probably heard of because they have a problem with this here in Colorado. So what happened with zebra mussels is they actually came in on the hull of a boat and, um, you know, they don't have a natural predator, so they just took over. And they don't look that bad, but they're filter feeders, and they're filtering out all the nutrients, so the fish are starving to death because they have nothing to eat. So it's really crazy to see the effects that these things can have. And I'm sure you've heard about what's happening in the Everglades, where people have been releasing snakes because they didn't want them as pets anymore. Well, they don't have winter down there, and so now the snakes are taking over, and I think 85% of the mammal population is gone in the Everglades because of that. So introduced species is huge, terrible. Um, Over-exploitation, so we're harvesting things faster than they can replace themselves. This is especially true for case-selected organisms. And then disruption of the food chain, right? So um, that kind of goes along with the previous one. If we remove the top predators, all of a sudden their prey is going to just explode to crazy numbers. So those are ways that we have been hurting the environment. Now in the next couple um, videos, we're going to talk about how we can conserve the populations.